Good morning and happy Monday, everybody. It's time for today's interactive read aloud. This week, we're going to be focusing on the book called Morning on the Lake. So I'll just pause here for a few minutes for you guys to take a look at the cover. This book is written by Jan Bordeaux Wabus, illustrated by Karen Rizchuk. <clears throat> Morning on the Lake. Morning on the Lake is a book published by Kids Can Press. We'll read just a few uh, pages today. Morning. Morning is calling. It is time. I hear my grandfather's slow, quiet voice in the distance. There is no need for him to say it again. I jump out of bed, rub the sleep from my eyes, and pull on my t-shirt and pants. As I run to the lake where he stands, waiting, I see his large silhouette against the pink morning sky. He is staring out at the cool, calm water. Morning mist looks like a gray blanket covering the lake. The sun is a big orange ball hiding behind the trees. I imagine it being pulled up by spider strings. A lot of figurative language there. A lot of visual sensory details in that first paragraph. I am ready, Mishimos. I yawn between the words and cover my mouth with my hand. I must be wide awake this morning. Grandfather turns to me and smiles. He is wearing his favorite old straw hat. It has the feather of a hawk stuck in the band. I found it for him when we were walking through the bush. On his feet are moccasins, plain moccasins, no beads, no fur, no quills. He made them himself from moose hide. He made me a pair too just like his. Grandfather looks down at, his, at my feet, so I look down. I wiggle my bare toes. Grandfather slowly shakes his head from side to side. Then he grins. I grin too. Come, Noshin, he says in his gentle voice. He motions to the water's edge. His birch bark canoe is waiting there for us. Long ago, when I was little, I watched Grandfather make his canoe. He told me that when I was bigger, I would make one just like his. I will, too. Grandfather stretches out his steady, strong arm. I hold onto it and climb into the canoe. It feels wobbly, so I sit very still. We begin to drift away from the shore. Because I am in the front looking out, I cannot see my grandfather's face, but I know he is smiling. I hear the dip of his paddle on the water and imagine many tiny bubbles trailing behind us on the glassy surface. I watch my reflection on the water as we glide. It is still early in the morning. There is no wind and it feels cool and damp. Everything is silent except the sound of the paddle. Grandfather stops the canoe in the center of the lake. He does not speak. This is his special place. Morning is his favorite time, and so it is mine. We wait, we listen, we peer into the thin vapors lifting from the lake. It is so very quiet that I am afraid to breathe, or I do not want to disturb this tranquil wilderness that encircles us. Then we hear it. A low, mellow, haunting hoot echoing across the water. And then another call, and another. I shiver, but I am not cold. Mishimus, did you hear that? I try to whisper, but I am not quiet enough. I see Grandfather raise his finger to his lips and then point. And I know that I must not speak again, but I cannot hold back my gasp. There in front of us are four loons. A father and a mother and two fluffy gray babies on her back. The male loon moves closer to the canoe. He is not afraid. 
I wonder if I should be. Sorry, guys, because of the glare, it's kind of hard to see, but they're, they're the baby ducklings right there, the baby loons. Okay, guys, I'm going to stop there for today. Please answer today's question, and I'll see you back here for tomorrow for more from our read aloud.